welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Challenge at the Yukon Original Air Date. It is January 4th, 1950, and the title is Jeff Marco's Gang. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Gold! Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's how mother can make breakfast a tempting meal that no one in the family wants to skip. Just pour out bowlfuls of delicious, crisp, Quaker-puffed wheat or Quaker-puffed rice. Top them with milk or cream and sliced bananas or some other fruit. Man, oh man, there's a delicious way to start the day. Just one bowlful of this swell-tasting, nourishing, ready-to-serve cereal shot from guns, and you'll say nothing tastes so swell, except maybe two bowlfuls. So start every day with a real breakfast treat, delicious Quaker-popped rice or Quaker-popped wheat. Jeff Marco had convinced two of his friends that there was plenty of gold to be had in the Yukon. Gold that other men had already dug from the ground. With Ollie and Gus, he had started out by way of White Pass from Skagway that summer. And before they reached Whitehorse, Jeff had already proved to his two unscrupulous companions that they could make their way by taking what they wanted. It was while they were still traveling through the pass that they made their first haul. Hey, Jeff... Gonna need more supplies before long. Don't have much money to get them with. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I know it. Stop worrying, will you? Who's worrying? Who's worrying? And as for you, Ollie, stop repeating everything you say. Drive me loco with that habit of yours. Sure, Jeff, sure. It's just my way. It's just my way, that's all. <laughs> no use trying to get Ollie to change, Jeff. We ought to call him Paul Parrot and be done with it. Ah, don't be funny. Don't be funny. Look at it, Ollie. What are we going to do for dough, Jeff? Hey, look ahead on the trail. See them two coming this way? Yeah. What about them? Well, they're heading south towards Skagway. That means they got gold and they're going south to spend some of it. Be ready to draw your guns. As soon as we get close to them, we'll take what we got. Good idea. Well, look, Jeff. They'll stop at the first settlement and get the law after them. They won't ride any place after we're through with them. Now, wait a minute. No use being trailed for murder. <laughs> I'm not that loco, in spite of Ollie's crazy chatter. What I mean is, we'll take their horses and sell them or trade them to the first Indians we come across. I hear to come be ready. Oh, 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 we're heading for Skagway to do a little spending. Then we'll go back before winter sets in. Cover them, boys. Sure, sure. Hey! We got the drop on them. What's the idea? Oh, the dismount. Now, see here. Dooty says, Dooty says. All right. Better do like they want us to, Joe. Yeah. They got guns on us. Steady, fella. I'll get their guns. Watch them. Now. Yeah. Yeah, I got their guns. We'll get the Mounties after you for this. Uh, sure. You'll find a couple of them back at the border if you can walk that far. Hey, you don't mean to take our horses, do you? Yeah, after I make sure the gold's in the saddlebags. It's here, all right. I'll lead one horse, Gus. You lead the other. Come on, come on. Steady, fellow. Grab another bridle, Gus. Sure. 
I got it. Now let's get away from here. Get up. Get up. Get it, boy. Get up. Later, in Selkirk, with Van Danis covering part of their faces, Jeff and his two followers brazenly entered the cafe. Now, hold up. Line up, all of you. The first one who makes a move will take a bullet. All right. While I keep him covered, Ollie, you and Gus go get their wallets and poke the dust. Yeah, it'll be a pleasure. It'll be a pleasure. Yeah. All right, you. All right, now, hand it over. All right. Yeah, they got plenty of gold. Got plenty of gold, Jeff. You won't get far, any one of you. The Mounties will trail you. Uh, uh, the Mounties won't get us. The Mounties won't get us. Hey, listen to him. He keeps repeating himself. Shut up. Shut up, I said. Ooh. Come on, hurry it up. Yeah, we got them all. We got them all. Well, let's get going, then. All right, Jeff. Come on, Ollie. Yeah, let's hurry it up. Oh, oh my... Don't let him get away. Hey, somebody go for the castle. Sure, oh, get the castle. Don't let him get away. After the holdup, the man who had particularly noticed Ollie's peculiar way of speaking went to report to the constable. Constable, there's been a holdup at the cafe. What? They lit out of town on horseback, taking every bit of cash we had. There were three of them. Oh, I had a telegraph report from Whitehorse not long ago to be on the lookout for three men who were wanted for robbery. Get a good look at them. Yeah, they wore bandanas over the lower part of their faces, so it's hard to say what they really looked like. I was so excited yeah, and all. Yeah, I know. But I did notice one thing. Oh, what was that? One of them talked kind of funny. In what way? What do you mean? Well, he kept repeating what he said, sort of. I see. Well, that's something anyhow. I'll go over to the cafe and find out what I can from the others over there. The trouble is, none of them agree on what they look like, Constable. Everybody's got a different way of describing them, seems like. Yeah, it's always that way when the crowd's held up. After I talk to the men, I'll send in a report to headquarters at Dawson City. I can't very well leave here... What's more, that gang will be more than one man can handle. Now, come on, let's go to the cafe. At the headquarters of the Northwest Mounted Police in Dawson City, Inspector Maynard was talking to Sergeant Preston in his headquarters office. Sergeant, we've had reports of a gang operating along the Yukon Trail. They've robbed men who were traveling, they've staged robbers in Whitehorse and Selkirk. Well, that means they're moving northward, sir. Well, they're thought to be still in the vicinity of Selkirk. Do you have any description of the gang? The only description we have is that there are three men of average appearance. They always use bandanas to hide their identity. It's not much to go on. No, but there is one thing that's been brought out by several people, though. What's that, sir? One of the men has a peculiar way of talking, a parrot-like manner of repeating his words. Well, that might help. What do you want me to do, sir? The constable at Selkirk lost the trail. He has requested that you and King come there to help round up the gang, Sergeant. All right, sir, but it may be that the gang will head back towards Skagway to avoid the winter. Could be. They've been so successful so far that they may stay in the Yukon. One way or the other, we want them. And it's up to you to bring them in, Sergeant, even if you have to follow them to Skagway. All right, sir, I'll start for Selkirk right away. I'll do all I can to bring in that gang. Come along, King. <laughs> Goodbye, Inspector. Goodbye, and good luck, Sergeant. After an uneventful trip to Selkirk, Sergeant Preston and King made the rounds of the town, questioning those who had been the victims of Jeff Marco's gang. He discussed the situation with a local constable in his office. Well, Frank, I haven't found out much more than the inspector told me about that gang. Uh, no. There aren't two men who agree on the descriptions they give of the three men in that gang. Except in one instance. What's that? They do agree about the member of the gang who talks in a peculiar way. That is... Repeats whatever he says in parrot fashion. Yes, that's right. I've warned everybody to be on the lookout for him. May show up at the cafe or at the trading post. Well, that is, if the gang hasn't left this vicinity. If they haven't, I'll make another move before long. At least that's what I'm counting on. Nick and I are going to the trading post for a few supplies. See you later, Frank. Come on, gang. <laughs> Meantime, Jeff, with Gus and Ollie, had settled in a cabin a few miles from Selkirk. That afternoon, Gus had gone to town for supplies. Jeff and Ollie were waiting at the cabin. Ollie was saying, Why couldn't I go to town, Jeff? Why couldn't I go? Hey, you fool, if you'd stop that silly way of talking, you could go. But people will notice the way you talk. I can't stay holed up in this place. I just... Shut can't... up! You said that once. Oh. Well, what are you planning, Jeff? What are you planning? It's getting mighty cold. The winter will soon be setting in. Couldn't make it back to Skagway now with horses. Once the trails are frozen, we can make it with a dog team. We haven't got a dog team. We haven't got one. I know that, you dope. Hey, we can steal one, maybe. Oh, we can steal one. Ah, uh, be too risky around here. 
What are we going to do? What are we... We'll gonna... buy one. There's a woman and a kid living in the next cabin up the trail. Her husband died, and she's fixing to move to the hotel for the winter. She wants to sell her dog team. Has a sign posted. Oh, yeah. I saw the sign. I saw the sign. Right outside the cabin. Right outside... Hey, look, the... trying to talk to you drives me nuts. Take some cash and go up to that cabin. That'll give you something to do. Make a deal with her for that dog team and sled. Give you the cash right now. Do as little talking while you're there as possible. Do you savvy? Yeah. Yeah. Now, look, the price she's asking is printed on the sign out in front of her cabin. Give her the price without quibbling, so you won't have to say much. Here, here's the cash. Now get going. Act as nice as you know how, so they won't be suspicious of you. All right, Jeff. All right. A short time later, in their cabin up the trail, Elsie Bagley and her small son, Glenn, heard a horse stopping outside. Oh, there. Oh. Mama, somebody's coming. It's a man. I can see out the window. All right, I'll see who it is and what he wants. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy. Hello. What do you want? Oh, no need to be scared. No need to be scared. I come about buying a dog team. Yeah, about buying a dog team. Oh, yes, of course. Won't you come in? Thanks, ma'am. Thanks. Hello, mister. Well, hello there, son. Hello there. Nice boy, ma'am. Nice boy. Thank you. And uh, now about the dog team. I, I... Got, the, got the money right here, right here. There you are. Just what you have marked on the sign. Just what you have marked on the sign. You talk funny, mister. Glenn, that's not nice. But he does, Mama. Forget it, son. Forget it. Like I said, there's the money. There's... Yeah, there's the money. But you haven't seen the team and sled yet. Well, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> that's mighty nice of you. But it is a good team, so you don't have to worry. Here, count it. Count it. Thank you. I'm sure it's all there. Now, Glenn, we can move to town right away. Oh, golly. That'll be fine. I'll give you a receipt for the money and a paper showing you own the dog team and sled, Mr. Oh, oh uh, name's Ollie Smith, ma'am. Name's Ollie Smith. My name's Glenn Bagley. My name's Glenn Bagley. Glenn, for shame. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Cute little fella. Yeah, he's a cute little fella. I'll go into the other room and fix the receipt, Mr. Smith. Then you'll own the dog team. Look, mister. Shut up, Button. Shut up, understand. Oh, golly. Yes, sir. I had the receipt and paper already. All I had to do was fill in the name and sign them. Here you are, Mr. Smith. Thanks. The dog, sled, and equipment are back in the shed. I'll uh, come back later with a friend and pick him up. Pick him up. Bye, ma'am. Goodbye, and thank you so much. Goodbye, mister. Goodbye. Ah, uh, button your lip. Glenn, you've made the man angry with you. Oh, gee, Mom. I bet even Sergeant Preston would laugh at the funny way Mr. Smith talks. You just wait and see if he doesn't when I tell him about it. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. For a breakfast that's delicious, for a breakfast that's nutritious, remember these three famous words. Shot from gun. Yes, shot from gun stands for the original, the one and only, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These are the giant size, the king size grains of premium wheat or rice shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Think of it. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are actually exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot through and through with bang up nut like flavor, too. And as Mother knows, wheat or rice shot from guns makes a deluxe family breakfast that's economical, that's easy to fix as falling off a log. Just pour out a bowl full and add some fruit and milk or cream. Say, talk about good. And what's more, Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice are good for you, too. They furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So how about it? The whole family will be getting off to a flying start when you eat Quaker Puff rice or Quaker Puff wheat. Yeah. 
It's never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original, crisp, fresh, wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue. When Ollie arrived at the cabin he shared with the others, he found Jeff Marco in a heated discussion with Gus, who had just returned from the store in South Bend. Here's Ollie back. Hey, what's the excitement? What's the excitement? First, tell me, how'd you make out? It's all set, all set. The team is ours. Sit down and save your breath. Sure, sure. Gus says he saw Sergeant Preston and his dog in town. Who's Sergeant? I knew you'd ask that. He's something special in the way of a mountie, you dope. He's here asking questions about us, and particularly about a dumb cluck who goes around making double talk. Yeah? Who does that? You, you crazy loon. Good thing we kept her away from town. That's right. Hey, it's beginning to snow outside now. By the night, maybe we can start out with the dog team. Yeah, we'll sell our horses at that settlement south of here, Beaver Creek. So far, Preston has nothing to put him on our trail. We ought to be safe if we get started south tonight. We'll pack what we need... Pick up the dog team on the way. Ah. Only thing is, that woman will notice there's three of us. She's leaving for town tonight. She's leaving. And we'll watch until we see her go by. And we'll set out. That Mountie can do all the snooping he wants around Selkirk. Early that evening, Elsie Bagley rode to town with young Glenn and arranged to put up at the hotel for the winter. The following morning, when Sergeant Preston learned they were in town, he took King with him and went to see them. As he entered the lobby, he saw them leaving the dining room. Hello, Glenn. We were just coming in to see you. Oh, golly. King seems better than ever. <laughs> Good morning, Sergeant. Glenn's been anxious to see you and King. I heard you'd moved into town for the winter. You came to Selkirk just in time. That's quite a storm outside. Yes, I know. We didn't get a buyer for our dog team and sled until yesterday afternoon. Did you get what you wanted for it, Elsie? Well, yes, I did. I expected to be argued into a lesser price, but the man who came to buy the outfit didn't quibble at all. Golly, he was funny, Sergeant. Now, Glenn, you mustn't make fun of people. I was rather ashamed of you yesterday, the way you laughed at Mr. Smith. But gosh, Mom, the way he said everything twice and all, it was funny. I know, but... Just a minute, Elsie. Did Mr. Smith repeat his words, as Glenn said? Why, yes, he did. Poor man, he probably can't help something that's become a habit. I'm sorry Glenn even brought it up. It was embarrassing the way Glenn... I'm glad he did bring it up. Why? What do you mean? You're fortunate the man paid you for that dog team. A man with his peculiar habit is one of the bandit gang that's been operating around here. Holly, was he a bandit? Oh, okay. Did he take the sled and team with him? No, he was to pick it up last night. I left the shed unlocked for him. I see. I'll get my team and head out that way. If I find that gang because of Glenn's information... He'll get a nice reward. Oh, golly. Come along, King. We have work to do. See you both later. Bye. Bye, Bye, King. After getting his dog sled and team ready, Sergeant Preston stopped by for a few minutes to talk to the constable. Well, Sergeant, you look as though you're prepared for a trip. Don't tell me you're leaving in this storm. Yes, on the trail of the gang we've been talking about. The man who has the peculiar way of talking bought a dog team for Mrs. Bagley yesterday. Pick it up at her cabin last night. Say, that is something. Want me to go with you? No, you may be needed here, Frank. King and I'll try to trail them to their hideout. Oh, and you think they're holed up in the vicinity? Well, we have no reason to think we've got a line on them. We'll get going now. Good luck, sir. Thanks. Come along, King. All right, King. Up front, boy. On King! On your husky! Within a short time, Sergeant Preston approached the cabin where the crooks had been living. He decided to stop at the cabin and ask if three men had passed there with a dog team, thinking the gang might have gone toward town. Looking! Hey, Husky! Hello! Come on, boy! Sergeant Preston waited a moment, and then, getting no response to his knock, he tried again a little harder. Suddenly, the latch slipped and the door opened slightly. And then, as the wind caught it, it banged wide open. Oh. Anybody home? <laughs> Looks deserted, King. Let's step inside. 
Well, boy, looks as if the tenant's moved out. The Mountie stood a moment looking around the cabin. He noticed a slip of paper on the floor, and because it was neatly folded, he stooped and picked it up out of curiosity. Unfolding it, he glanced at the contents and then straightened with sudden interest. King, we've hit on something. The paper in the Mountie's hand was the receipt made out to Mr. Smith and signed by Elsie Bagley. Preston realized then that the crooks had been using that cabin. He spoke to King. Let's go, boy. We'll go on to the Bagley place and try to get the trail from there. And King! Come! Reaching the Bagley place, Preston took King and went to the shed. Get the scent of the dogs in here, King. Might not be too faint outside for you to follow. Find them, fella. Find them. Once more, with King in the lead, Preston started out. The great dog headed southward. Preston urged the team onward at a fast pace. And King! On Meantime, Jeff Marco and his companions had traveled along the trail at an easy pace since they were not expecting to be followed. They had moved along during the night, and with the coming of daylight, the storm had increased in its intensity. And they were finally glad to stop at a dilapidated shack they found along the trail. They used the broken-down furniture in the place to make a fire in the fireplace, and then rolled in blankets on the floor to rest. It was after midday when they rolled out of their blankets. <laughs> Hey, it stopped snowing outside. Stop snowing. Yeah, we heard you the first time. Uh, it's bloody cold out there. Yeah, but we can't stay in this dump much longer. We're not far from Beaver Creek. I'm glad of that. Those horses have held us back. We'll get rid of them there. Yeah. Now yeah, we'll eat. Now we get ready to move on. Hey, something's bothering the horses out in the back of the lean-to. Ollie, go out and make sure they're all right. Maybe it's a wolf. Maybe it's a wolf. There! <laughs> sure, maybe it's a field mouse. I don't be a fool. You got a gun, haven't you? Well, grab a cup of coffee first, then go out and guard the horses so we're set to yeah. Sure, Jack. Meantime, Sergeant Preston pushed on. The snow had stopped falling, but the wind was cold and biting. He stopped for a moment to rest. Okay. We made good time, boy. Soon be at Beaver Creek. They may stop there a while. The wind was blowing up trail toward the Mountie and King. Just as they were about to start moving, they both heard the sound of a horse's winning. I guess you heard that too, eh, King? Seems to come from just up around the bend. We'll get moving now and find out. Up front, boy. And King! And... A little farther on, as he rounded a bend in the trail, Sergeant Preston saw the old shack and noticed smoke from the chimney. He pulled the team over under a protecting ledge and stopped. Looking, hold on. Someone's in that shack, King. Go on without the team and investigate. Come on, fella. After gulping some coffee and food, Ollie had gone out to the lean-to where the horses were tethered. Jeff and Gus were packing up to continue their trip. Suddenly, the door opened, and Sergeant Preston and King entered. Hey, look, I'm out here. Hey, don't you believe in knocking, mister? And why the gun? The gun is just a precaution. I want to ask a few questions. You got nothing on us, Mountie. Maybe not. But as I said, I have a few questions to ask. As Preston gazed intently at the two crooks, the door opened quickly, and Ollie pressed a gun at the Mountie's back. Put him up, Mountie. Put him up. I saw you come in. I saw you. Oh, the double talker, eh? Well, you fool. He won't live to take us in for those holdups, Jeff. He won't live. You men are the ones I'm trailing. Won't do you any good knowing I'm going to plug you, see? From the corner of his eye, Preston saw King crouch, ready to spring. The Mountie spoke sharply. Take him, King! Oh, no, 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 take him off! The great dog grabbed Ollie's gun arm. The crook dropped his gun. Don't move, you two. Preston, still holding his gun on Jeff and Gus, spoke sharply to King. I'm King. Watch him, boy. You're not taking me, Mountie. No, you're not. Oh, all right, now you there, drop your gun. All right. I'll take the guns. Sergeant Preston gathered up the crook's guns. He had Gus and Jeff stand together with King in front of them, watching until he tied up Ollie. Then Jeff was tied, and finally Gus. There, King, that does it. I'll take them to Beaver Creek. I think we can make them talk after we get them there. 
The following day, Sergeant Preston and King were waiting in the constable's office when Elsie Bagley and her son, Glenn, entered. Oh, Sergeant. Hi there, King. Hi there. Take it easy, Glenn. You're beginning to double talk like the cook we caught. <laughs> <laughs> we heard you wanted to see us, Sergeant. That's right, Elsie. That gang is in jail at Beaver Creek. They did enough talking to prove they're the crooks. The constable has something to say to Glenn. What is it, constable? What is it? <laughs> there he goes again. Glenn, there's a reward for information leading to the capture of that gang. You gave the information, so the reward's yours. Five thousand dollars. Oh, thank heaven. I was wondering if our money would hold out for the winter. Now I can buy a dog like King. Can I, Mom? Can I? Of course you can buy a dog, Glenn. Yes, but you can't buy a dog like King. There's only one like him in the whole Yukon. <laughs> King agrees with you, Frank. Or it might be he's trying to say the case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Picture yourself trailing outlaws across the windswept, snow-covered Great Northwest. Yes, like Sergeant Preston. Well, sir, you'd appreciate that regal stamina calls for a nourishing breakfast. So fortify yourself every morning with a breakfast that includes a heaping bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, wheat or rice shot from guns gives you added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And delicious, well, taste them. You just can't beat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. So tomorrow at your store, look for the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Remember, delicious, crisp, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. Now, the makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice remind all parents listening to this program that poor school conditions handicap our children and weaken our nation. Do your part to avoid this by joining and working with local civic groups and school boards actively seeking to improve educational facilities. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the battle at Bradley. There were five of us in the trading post at Bradley's when the Indians attacked. Four men and a girl. The girl was so desperately ill that she couldn't be moved. There were hundreds of the renegades, and we were completely surrounded. Our only chance was for King to bring help from Dawson. But an Indian saw him as he left the post. He shot, and King was hit. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereal is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. <laughs> This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.